As I mentioned, this is a series filament wired set. You can see that here on the schematic. Here it's ground, and then it goes through all the tube filaments and back up to the AC plug. But if you add up all these tube filament voltages, you only get 85 volts AC at 0.6 amps. Back when they designed this set, the common line voltage was 117, and if you plug that in to a series dropper formula, you're going to get right about 54 ohms at 20 watts, which is what they put in here. That is this huge resistor down here. The side of this second is very hot when this is in operation. Now just like in my Philco 37611 project, I would like to eliminate this if at all possible. The set will run cooler, be less stress on these old components, the set will last longer. Turns out that 85 volts was kind of a magic number when you figure a more modern line voltage of 120. Because if you just use a single diode, you pretty much knock it right down. That's all you need is one diode. Um, a little bit of slop if you want to get exactly on. You can use a 1 ohm resistor which will dissipate about 0.3 watts. The only downside though is that uh, you'll get pretty much instant full juice going to the tubes. In other words, it'll be kind of a hard startup. Having a large resistor in series with the tubes gives it a more even controlled startup. Because when these tube filaments are cold, when you first turn the set on, they have far less resistance and we get a surge of current. If you just had a diode, they don't present really any res much resistance to uh, current flow and those go shooting right into the tubes and you'll see the tube filaments will light up real bright and they'll cool down. So what I think I will try doing is using a current limiting device like a CL90. This is what one looks like. What these devices do is they kind of have the opposite property as a tube. These have a higher resistance when they're cold and when they get hot they have a lower resistance. So if you put one of these in series with the tube filaments in that diode, this should provide a more controlled startup. They do get kind of hot though, because they do uh, have a resistance of uh, 2 or 3 ohms when they reach operating temperature. and uh, We'll dissipate a couple watts or so. Or yeah, so you want to make sure it's not near anything, but uh, I'm sure I can find somewhere in there to put it. Let me put it down in here. I've also popped out a couple of the can electrolytics. These are each a single section, 100 microfarad cap. They work in conjunction with these two big selenium rectifiers here to form a voltage doubler on the AC line, and that's what powers the high voltage for the set. You can see that here on the schematic. Goes through this resistor here, and then 100 microfarad, selenium rectifier, selenium rectifier, 100 microfarad. So these take that 120 or so volts AC input and double it and rectify it and filter it, and you end up getting about 255 volts DC to power the whole set. Now, because selenium rectifiers are inefficient compared to modern silicon diodes. There's actually a bit of power wasted on these. That's the reason they're kind of shaped like this is to uh, to dissipate that heat. If I just replace these with a single modern silicon diode they won't have that loss and I will get a higher output voltage, probably more like 300 volts here, which is a bit stressful to the rest of the set. So a way to combat that is to add series resistance to each of these rectifiers. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 47 to 100 ohms, I would guess. Uh, I would start maybe uh, with 100 and then do some, you know, experimenting with the set and then adjust it to find the right value. This set also already has a 10 ohm 5 watt resistor right here, which I believe is what they call a fusible resistor, which serves two roles. One, the resistance is there to provide a bit of a soft start to this when you turn it on. Two, that fusible part means that this will act as a fuse. If something shorts out down the line here and draws too much current, this resistor will actually burn out and go open. Well, I could replace this with a regular fuse and maybe a 100 or 120 or 133 ohm resistor. 
to uh, to drop this voltage down rather than putting an individual resistor in each one of these selenium rectifiers. It might be easier because I'd like to leave these in place just for aesthetics that I can tuck a diode back in here somewhere. But if I want to put a, a power resistor on each one, I would have to find, you know, there's only nowhere to fit it in here. But uh, that other power resistor, I believe, is this guy right here. So there's plenty of room to pop this out and put a larger resistor that dissipates more heat down here. And because I plan on disabling this, it won't be that hot and you know, the second handle, the extra heat this will be putting out. So that's my plan. So to recap. I want to try using a diode and a CL90 device to replace this huge 20 watt resistor, two modern silicon diodes to replace these seleniums and bump up this resistance to compensate for the more efficient diodes. Now as for the replacement electrolytics I'm going to be using. Well, I did get a copy of the SAMS service info. Not only does it have really good schematics and voltage readings and waveforms and alignment info, it also has a detailed parts list, including the electrolytic capacitors, their capacity, and their voltage rating. The reason I really wanted to get that is the other schematic I had didn't list the voltage rating. And some of the capacitors in the set appear to be replacements like this guy. So I don't know that I trust this 40 microfarad 200 volt rating. Now that I've got this, I know that I can trust it. I've written those down here, so we can see them a little bit better. Now there is one problem, if you want to order these, you probably aren't going to find a 60 microfarad cap or a 20 microfarad cap. They just don't make those values anymore. So what I like to do is use either this value or a little bit higher, rather than going a little bit lower find the next closest available value. For the voltage I like to go 50 to 100 volts higher to give them a little bit more overhead and it should extend the life of the capacitor but that's stressing it so much. So on this side I've written down the parts that I am going to use. 100 microfarad that's no problem to buy and I'll use 250 instead of 150. 400 instead of 300 volts. 60 microfarad closest commonly available value is 68. Instead of 20, I'll use 22. Instead of 40, I'll use 47. Uh, and now let me reach this guy. Most places don't sell capacitors in more than uh, 450 volts. Luckily, there are a couple options. One, uh, JustRadios.com does sell 5 and 600 volt caps. For example, here's the 10 microfarad 500 volt. There's also a type of capacitor called a Sprague Atom, A-T-O-M, that a few places carry, like Mauser. But they're pretty expensive. For example, the Mauser Atom uh, 10 microfarad 500 volt cap is listed at about $13. And the 600 volt version is about $23. So $23 on one capacitor? Eh, I don't think so. So I think I'll use this. Now, if you really want to save some money, there is one other thing you can do, which is build your own. It turns out that if you stack capacitors in series like this, you could increase their voltage rating at the expense of the capacitance. So, for example, if I took two 22 microfarad 450 volt caps end to end like this, it'll cut the capacity down to 11 microfarads, but increase the voltage rating. If capacitors were perfect, it would end up being a 900 volt capacitor. But because there's some leakage current and there'll be some manufacturing differences, the capacitors won't be exactly the same capacity and the leakage current won't be exactly the same, you should derate these a bit. Maybe call this a 300 or 350 volt cap. So maybe I'd call this an 11 microfarad 700 volt cap. And again, because there's manufacturing variations, it's a really good idea to put some resistors across this. These are called equalizing resistors. What these will help do is ensure that the voltage is divided evenly between the two to keep this point here at the at the midpoint voltage wise. It can be a little bit tricky to determine the proper value of resistance to use though. If you go too low 
you may be drawing a, an excessive amount of current from the circuit and you're going to load it down too much but if you use too high a resistance you might not draw, draw enough current to keep this point at the mid voltage but it's certainly a, a time-honored way of increasing the voltage reading on a capacitor for example here's a couple 22 microfarad caps throw a couple resistors on there throw in the circuit and you're good to go and uh, generally these are cheaper than the five or six hundred volt caps well yeah, there's two options you can go with uh, one final thing is that capacitors commonly come rated at 85 degrees Celsius if you can try to get the 105 degrees Celsius rated caps and tube, equi tube equipment runs hotter and especially in a case uh, like this or a set like this I should say then since inside of a metal case things are really going to cook inside so it's not a bad idea to get some higher quality caps that are rated at 105 degrees Celsius like this so I've got my work cut out for me, I've got my parts, and I'm just, uh, just got to get to it.